There we go, baby. That is a good question. It was a really, yeah, it was a, it was a sly backdoor way of asking, like, which one. <laughs> Very good. Very nice. Very uh, well played. Sure I got an answer to that. What a great a way to start. Guys, I gotta tell you, I genuinely absolutely love this. I watched all 10 episodes and it actually inspired oh, me. Wow. I've never I'd never read it before and I actually started reading it. It's incredible. But seriously, the, the show is fantastic. So thank you for your time. Thank you for oh watching. Oh my goodness, what a great a way to start. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good way to I'm gonna jump into this. You guys have a really beautiful scene near the end of the series where your characters watch The Godfather on the big screen with a crowd and the camera goes over your face and we get to see everyone's reaction to it. That's just something I just did for the first time a few months ago because I they just re-released it for the 50th anniversary because many of us grew up watching it on TV, but seeing it with a crowd, it was it was magic. It was, it was unbelievable. It was like seeing it for the first time. I was wondering if you guys could tell me about the first time you ever saw The Godfather on the big screen. To be determined uh, for me, I mean, yeah, I was, I was the same. I watched it on TV and then once DVDs came around, you know, um, I watched it on DVD, but I watched it as the first in the first time, really as an adult, not that long ago. I would say maybe, you know, six years ago. It had been a long time since I revisited it, and I, I just couldn't believe how much tension the film still holds, and just what a masterclass um, in front of the camera and behind the camera. Um, so many of those people went on to become titans of this industry. So it's it's just such an incredible film and deserves to be celebrated, you know, um, 50 years later. For sure. Juno, have you had a chance? Have you seen it on the big screen yet? I, you know, so I grew up, my father's a filmmaker and was a huge, huge fan of the Godfather films. And he had a setup with a, a projector and a pull down screen. So it wasn't quite the size of a cinema, but I remember being about 14, 15, I think probably when he showed me the first Godfather and it was this extraordinary moment for me, that scene with Marlon Brando when he's trying not to show how heartbroken he is about the death of his son. And from that to me was like a masterclass in acting, you know, that you may go on to do all the studies in the world. And then you watch that scene, you're like, wow, I could have just watched that to show how to, portray a bazillion emotions in one given moment. And I remember my dad really talking to me about the lighting of the film and how, how captivating that was and how the light almost has its own character in the, in the movie. And, um, and also how it changed the way people perceived gangsters and mobsters and how it wasn't just labeling them with those kind of aggressive titles. It was that they are fathers, their sons, their brothers, their husbands, and, they're human. And I think that I couldn't be more thrilled and honored to be a part of something that is celebrating such a groundbreaking piece of film that still, to this day, is a groundbreaking piece of film. <laughs> it's crazy how good it, it still is. And Miles, you have such a great line where I think you describe it as like, it's a terrifying movie about people you love, which I thought was just absolutely perfect. Um, I want to, you mentioned Marlon Brando. I want to talk about the actor's who play the actors, the, the actors who play Al Pacino and Marlon Brando and James Caan, even the guy who plays Robert Redford, like they're just flawless casting choices. I'm curious for you guys, what was that like acting opposite these guys? Because their performances as the actors in The Godfather, like the guy that played Pacino, like I got chills watching him. Mm -hmm. He was phenomenal. Anthony, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a very, it was a very daunting, um, both, you know, for the casting director and for the actors to, play these these people especially at that you know period in time but you know Juno you know can certainly speak to this as well but the first time that we saw Justin Chambers as Brando was uh I got it was like it, it was incredible you really felt like you were sitting you know almost with with the ghost of Brando and and in his home and the set design everything was so well manicured on this, but I, I thought all those guys just did such an incredible job and it's really, you know, it's no easy feat. And um, I'm sure they were very intimidated to, to play, you know, Pacino and, and Brando. Um, but yeah, I think they just knocked it out of the park. Oh God, so do I. The day we first worked with Marlon Brando or Justin, I, I was literally like a giddy teenage girl. It was actually a bit embarrassing to remember. I was really quite flustered. And then- um, she, forgot and, a, and she forgot then, a line, she added a line. I, she, I was, she was like Luca Brasi with her cards. 
<laughs> yeah. Literally. I was completely, <laughs> I'm such a Brando fan. So I was like, I never had blah, 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 blah. And I think there's, a, you know, you watch something um, like Walk the Line and people think that Joaquin Phoenix is what Johnny Cash looks like. He doesn't at all. He's just a, such an extraordinary version of Johnny Cash in that, that I think these actors being able to capture the essence of these extraordinary talents, people that inspired a lot of us to be doing what we're doing today is something that I, I will take my hat off to them forever for it. Cause my God, I mean, I, I, yeah, I just imagine the idea of playing one of my favorite sort of female hero actresses from that time era. And I would be terrified. And I truly was gobsmacked by how, how you forgot you were watching actors playing actors. You just were in it, you know? It was absolutely flawless. Guys, they're giving me the wrap. I've got a thousand more questions I wish I could ask you. But seriously, I flew through all 10 episodes in like 48 hours. It was just, it's phenomenal. But seriously, thank you. I, I mean, it's just, it's so good. I, I couldn't stop. Oh, but I appreciate man, you appreciate taking the time. That. And yeah, it's always a pleasure. And, and Miles, I'll see you in, in San Diego in like two weeks in person. Uh, right? yeah. There we go, baby. All right, guys, we'll talk to <laughs> this. You know, one of the most fascinating things about this show is that it's making me look at some of my favorite scenes of all time differently, like through a different prism, yeah. sort of with knowledge I didn't have before. What is a scene from The Godfather that you now see the most differently as a result of having done this show? Ooh. I should say that if you're, if you're fascinated by like some of the behind the scenes, like uh, Dexter Fletcher, the director for the first few episodes, who's, I love him. He's fantastic. Me too. Me he too. suggested that I get the, the Godfather notebook. Okay. Oh, cool. Which, yeah. is, which is basically this enormous book yeah. that has all of Francis's uh, thoughts written on the sides in his own handwriting. And you see with the kind of anxiety that he was going through day to day, trying to make this, this film. And, um, uh, do I have a my I guess my favorite um, scene that's come out of all of it is and it's a myth, it's mythology now, which is the scene where Pacino has to step up because they're wondering about him. Francis has to step up because they're wondering about him. And it's the famous scene where um, Michael has to step up. And he goes and gets the gun and he has got to shoot Salazzo and McCluskey in the in the in the uh, restaurant. He drops the gun. Oh, it's poetic that it was that scene. It was, it was, it was as if like Mario wrote that entire sequence right. himself. It was it was it was poetic. Patrick, what right. about you? Did you have one in particular? Um, that sort of changed my perspective yeah. because we worked on it from this other yeah. uh, perspective. Um, I think you know. I think it was interesting knowing um, the scene of uh, Michael and Kay in front of the Gulf and Western when we were shooting that scene. I think it was, you know, I I think what was cool about that is knowing how nervous and insecure, you know, Pacino was, you know? Um, you know, that kind of pressure, you know, to do good. You know, you look at Pacino and you go, well, he's he's Pacino. You know, he's, he's an incredible, incredible artist. But, you know, that he was young and nervous and a little naive and green. Uh, and so that was definitely, like, something I found interesting. And I think we did it. It was done so well. Oh, it's beautiful. It was yeah, weird to hear yeah. them and call him like shrimpish. Cause I feel like I've, I've met Pacino before and I don't yeah. like, I don't think of him. That wasn't meant to be a name drop. And I was like, I don't think of him as like, it was a, a it was a name drop. Josh. I'm, I'm oh, very sorry. Well, if you're going right. to name drop anybody, <laughs> Pacino is the guy to name drop. Uh, yeah, exactly. So Dan, there's actually, there's a moment in the finale where we're, we're both of you guys win the Oscar for, for best adapted screenplay and you're at a party and you actually hold up an Oscar at the party. I've always been curious in a moment like that, whose Oscar are you holding it? Cause are they allowed to make like replica Oscars or was it actually somebody's? No, I think that, well, right. Are they allowed to make replica Oscars? That is a good question. I, I didn't, it didn't have an engraving on it. I looked at it. I think it was, a, I think they, it was like a, a recreation. I don't want to get anybody. Maybe the, maybe the shoulders are at a slightly yes. different angle. That's yes, exactly. And then that right. makes it not an Oscar. Right now, Paramount's that going, oh God, why he, he called us out. And they're heavy. They're heavy, yeah. They're, really, uh, they're giving me the wrap. I've got to say, I know the series isn't even out yet, but I'm already looking to the future. Is there a good enough story about the making of Godfather Part Two to justify a second season of the offer? You know what I want to happen? I, okay. Let's let's wish, or who knows what will oh, happen. Yeah. Okay. It's too soon. It's too soon. But wouldn't it be cool 
yeah. if there was some kind of starting of I don't want to, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. Say it. Come on. Say it. Say it. The start of the universe, of, Danny. The starting of making of part two, and then it kind of overlaps into Apocalypse Now and all Ooh. that insanity. And then we get a little bit of Mario and Superman. A, yes, I, you get a little bit of everything during that time, kind of like you do for this. And then when you're doing Apocalypse Now, I can just play like a like you know a, a background soldier. And you <laughs> no, just keep man, you'd be hanging out on set, <laughs> <laughs> flying helicopters. Yeah, this is gold. This eating, is gold. I'm stoop. here for this. <laughs> gentlemen if you can't tell i genuinely love this show i watched all 10 episodes all weekend it's just absolutely forgetting phenomenal you guys crushed it so seriously thank you for, i know you got a busy day so i appreciate you taking the time thanks jake thanks so you much are great. i really appreciate Have a great it one, good to see you how are you hi jake good, good morning, morning jake well. i've got to tell you i genuinely love that i watched all 10 episodes over the weekend it is absolutely phenomenal and actually inspired me because i've never read it before so it inspired me to actually get the book and crack it open and read it because it's I, apparently it's a phenomenal read so seriously thank you for taking the time Television right. inspiring reading. I know. How about that? It's a strange oh. thing. It's a strange thing. You know, I've got to say, watching this this series, it's pretty awe inspiring to see how just how beautifully and meticulously this show recreates some of the most iconic, just the physical sets of all time. I'm curious, as actors, just as fans of The Godfather, what it's like to walk onto a set like that, and is there any part of you that feels like maybe just for a moment, like you were actually in The Godfather? There was some of the sets were great, weren't they? The, the, the office at the beginning. I always oh. remember when we got in there, I was always like, it made the, the hair stand up. The a attention bit. to detail. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. The reenactments of a particular scene, the one where we see uh, Michael, who plays Al, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the restaurant, it was a complete, you know, you mean, everything was the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cameras were the same, the floor, the whatever. That was an amazing scene. Yes. And I've always been curious, like like Colin, you, you started in a film where, where you were in the, the Oval Office, and I've always been curious, like, what a Hollywood recreation, I've never been to the Oval Office, but, like, like w does that feel real when you're in sets like that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's, it's always a little bit of a trip when you walk into an area that you've seen before, uh, you know, if you've not stepped into it, but you've seen before. And so when you walk into those rooms, you sort of have a little bit of a moment of, like, oh, this is... This is eerie. And then inevitably a door opens and a grip walks in and then you see it's not a real room and, and the illusion is broken. Yeah, someone in shorts. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you'd go this, but there was more so than our sets. We actually got to go just, they were just ripping out Bob Evans's office. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so we got to, we were some of the last people ever to be able to go into what was the office. We used the outside of it and then we had to rebuild it and oh, actually the rebuild was nicer. Yeah. Yeah, but Paramount hadn't changed it at all. Wow. Same carpet, same pretty garish wallpaper. Yes. But, but it did Strange have a... room at the back, dodgy parquet floor. <laughs> That's so, right. But it was it on, but so it was but you were like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm in yeah. the big man's office. Yeah. yeah. And you just think about like like the conversations that were had within those walls and like oh, the exactly. deals that went down and the movies that, that were burst there. It's all it's incredible. It's I don't know. It's ripped it's, out. That's, see, that's so sad. And I get like, you know, like property, I get I get the value of real estate, but that's so sad because I love movie history and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, something about his resonance though, right? Yeah. Within Paramount that they kind of honored him and left it. For yes. Them. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Um, I know that the story behind The Godfather, it's, it's obviously, it's an incredible one. And not all productions are this insane and crazy, but of all the projects you guys have been a part of, which one would make for the best kind of like the offer type of story to get the behind the scenes drama? Coronation Street. No. <laughs> well, that's a long one. No, I, don't, I don't know. It's everything's. Are you basically? Are you basically ask, asking us which one of the films was the, was, the, was the most chaotic? It was a really yeah. It was a, it was a sly backdoor way of asking like which one. <laughs> very good. Very nice. Uh, very yeah, well I'm played. Sure I've got an answer to that. Though. I was in Game of Thrones for a bit, and there was often a foot of pig excrement. Ah, oh. that that added a certain. That's an episode right there. Yeah, no, that's an episode right there. Um, but yeah, good good people and nice pigs. I can't think of I one off the top of my head, but it tends to be that the, those that the, when you get when the, all these things happen, that the film ends up being good. So may it ha may it happen to us all more. Yeah. Fair enough. Well said. Gentlemen, I if you can't tell, I just I absolutely love this show. It was you guys just absolutely nailed it. It was phenomenal. And seriously, as someone who loves classic films and classic film history this was this was everything i always wanted and more so seriously thank you for taking the time i appreciate you thank, thank you. you chicago
All right, we love you guys. Thank you so this much. This might be a, a, a stupid question, but but I know you worked obviously with Robert Duvall on Gone in 60 Seconds. So did yeah. you guys ever get a chance to talk every, Godfather? Every day I would question him and I was I was like, you know, what was it like? It was funny because it, it was an interesting thing. A lot of a lot of the actors that were working with Marlon Brando, that was my, that was my the, the focus of all our conversations at least for me at the time because I'm such a fan of Marlon Brando's. Um uh, his his first reaction was, you know, I said, so what, what is it like working with him? And he said, um, you couldn't hear him. You couldn't hear him because I guess he was, uh, Marlon, in, in, in figuring out his character, was speaking silently and sort of mumbling. And apparently, from what I understand, maybe this is hyperbole, but he, uh, he looped or overdubbed um, the entire performance of The Godfather. Which for me, you know, it's like one of the great performances. I mean, there's kind of, it, you know, I think you can kind of say that for, for several films or roles of Marlon Brando's where there's kind of like acting before that movie came out and then acting afterwards. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of like the, the BCAD of acting, kind of like that, that watershed moment oh yeah yeah the did, BC, yeah right yeah. exactly yeah did uh, did robert duvall ever talk about having to like wear marlon brando's dialogue like on him i've, I've always been curious to how he felt about having to do that um no i don't know i think um i he we never talked about that and uh but yeah i've seen those photographs online where there's other actors mm -hmm. that have it up here or <laughs> It's, it's pretty wild, it's, but I mean, yeah. obviously it yielded one of the great performances. Speaking of yeah. Marlon Brando, obviously graded one of the great pop culture gangsters of all time. I'm sort of curious as an actor, what lessons uh, did you learn from him and his approach that maybe you brought to your performance of, of a real life gangster? Oh God, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, you, you hear uh, um, all these different stories about it and, and who knows, um, what uh, what that was i think there's a there's a great documentary um uh that somebody found all of the these tape recordings of, of marlon brando uh talking uh into a into a tape recorder just in his living room and talking about his experiences and sort of creating a, a diary and they put it together in, in a, a, a or, or or created a, a, a structured story out of it and documented his life using this um, this narration. Um, and he does touch on acting a little bit, which I, I, uh, some of the things that he said in there, which I, I think were really interesting and compelling. Oh, I gotta find that. Um, yeah. I'm gonna cut you loose on this because I'm on, honestly in awe of how much you disappear into this performance. And a huge part of that is, is his voice. And I'm just sort of curious how mm. you got there, when you knew you nailed it. And because it's such a rough voice, did it have any effect on, on your vocal cords whenever you wrapped filming? Yeah, I, I guess so. You know, that was that was the, the the thing that made me the most nervous and the thing that I, I guess I struggled with the most because, you know, in the context of uh, the genre, because, you know, uh, uh, this really is, uh, you know, there, there's there's something that, that, that has a sort of a comedic uh, bent to this story. I mean, there's, there's humorous parts, um, um, but, you know, you don't, as an actor, you don't want to go overreach or go too far and into caricature and so that it was um i was so nervous about that and, and and it was really just a matter of like trusting the 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 group of people that that um i was with and uh the the directors that were on uh, dexter fletcher who uh was really just incredible to work with made this experience one of the one of the better experiences i've had um adam arkin and and nikki toscano um um it was just, you know, you just kind of had to just sort of leave it to them. But I, I, I bothered them quite a bit uh, with that. Like, is it consistent? Is it consistent? Is it consistent? <laughs> <laughs> I hope I wasn't too annoying. It, it, it was worth it was worth the bother, man, because the performance is phenomenal. The series, oh, your, really your monologue funny. about knowing whether or not you're someone that can hit someone over the head with a baseball bat was just, oh, it was fantastic. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. but seriously, I appreciate you. Appreciate your time, man. Seriously, congratulations on this. Oh, oh that's nice. Thanks, man. Thank All right. Take care, man. Good to meet All you. Right. We don't need roads.